Okay, we're going to cut right to the quick here. We've got an American telly. I just had a subscriber actually ask a question pertaining to his telly why he can't keep it in tune. So at this point, I've done nothing to this guitar, just tuned it up with the tuner. We're going to demonstrate all the way across, open string, first fret, and then you will get a play-by-play. -play. When I've done my thing, I'm going to come back, same guitar, same string, same tuning, open string, first fret, and you can be the judge. That's like 12 cents sharp. Sharp. Ten sharp. I'm not death grip in this. The very light touch. Still eight cent sharp. Okay. Ten cent sharp. If somebody had an even harder grip than I do right now, it'd be like fifteen cent sharp. It's about six cent sharp. And four or five cents sharp. Well, as you can see, there is substantial fret wear in this guitar. This guitar was being played big time. So all of the Patreon subscribers will be getting a front row seat on precisely step by step how I bring this telly, which is almost unplayable at this point, up to perfection. Okay, this fella put a Duncan pickup in here, and it looks like he's got Glendale saddles. Good move. Uh, that rust there is just sweat from the guy's hand. I mean, this is the fella that owned it previously. This guitar was on the road being played professionally full-time. So we will set the bridge up perfectly. Perfect radius match to the fingerboard, and as always, I'll make my adjustable radius gauge. And then we'll intonate those saddles all the way across. Fret dress, and of course, compensated nut. Okay, first thing we got to do is nail that radius. That's a really high arched radius. So we made up our concave radius gauge and we'll trace that onto a block of pine. And now we've got a perfect match and we have a convex radius gauge to match the fret radius. So before we go anywhere near this thing with a leveling file, we just want to kind of get a sense on the overall lay of the neck. That doesn't really show anything there, that longer straight edge. So let's go to the shorter one. Okay, yeah, there's definitely some clicking and ticking. Yeah, even on this side, zero in a little closer. So you can see, right, we've got ticking on both sides. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to loosen that truss rod off just a little bit until that goes away. Good. That did it. Good. Nope. That's all it took. About a third of a rotation of that uh, truss rod to get the lay of the neck as straight as possible. Just to illustrate, so you can kind of under understand what I'm doing at this neck to body junction. We're going to bring you in a little bit closer so that you can get a real clear idea of why we're dressing this at the neck to body junction. We did get this portion of the neck straight. As you just saw, we adjusted the truss rod and got rid of any back bow at this end of the neck. But when we go right up to the last fret, we put that long straight edge on there. Look at this. That's a three thou feeler gauge. So what that tells you is most of the trouble is right here, but let's bring it in a little closer. Here's an even shorter and 
and I can still get that three thou in, right? Here we go. So we're going to take care of that high spot at the top. Before I recrown and polish, we're going to put that straight edge on again and let you take another look. It's definitely made an improvement because that doesn't go all the way now. It only goes across three frets. So we've got to keep working on that top end. Let's take another run at it. Now luckily, a lot of these modern tellies and strats have huge frets. So we've got lots of real estate to work with. We'll get that down dead level and then we'll still have plenty of crown left to redress a few more times. So that pretty well nailed it. So that 3 thou feeler gauge does not fit under that straight edge anymore. What that tells us is that we have leveled that surface from here to here. And so these last frets, you can see how square those crowns are. We had to take quite a bit off to correct that. But now this is dead level. Even with a small straight edge, no clicking, no ticking, we're good. Perfect. So now I'm backing up the neck and just checking quickly as I go because we're now going to go full length. So you can see by the fretware in these crowns that this guitar has been really played. The guy that owned it originally was on tour full time and you can see that he, he's logged some serious time in on this telly. So now that we've taken care of that top end, now we're going to go full length. But I wanted to just bring in and show you that because that'll all be gone by the time we're done. This is another argument why we remove the nut. We are putting a compensated nut in. Even if I wasn't putting a compensated nut in, and it's very rare that I don't put a compensated nut in, but if I wasn't, I would still remove that nut. We want a clean sweep, full length of the fingerboard to get this whole thing leveled along the entire trajectory of the string pad. Okay, yeah. I've pulled back so you can see that full length of the neck. Now what we're doing is we're slipping over that radius of the crown and I'm kind of making my way back, backing up the neck and following through to the top end as I go. There we go. I'm just getting some light sort of scratch marks to give me a read on this first. Now you can see I'm chasing it up, cross hatching as I go. I'm going to go one last pass with the file full length. Okay. Alright, I'm going to stop now and check this with the straight edge. This is a 15 inch straight edge, so I'm just going along the length and I've got my feeler gauge and I'm just going to kind of go along here and I can see that I've got a little bit of relief in there and that's a good thing. Center, yeah, stops right at the same spot. That's three thou. Beautiful. So what that means is this fret is the highest fret. That's exactly what you want. So when you go up to the top of the neck, check, we'll have a little bit of relief here. A little tiny bit, of, not even three thou. And in the center, same deal, just a whisper. Good, okay, so let, let's do a little experiment here. Okay, so we have that three thou, and that brings us from the second fret right up to the 13th fret. So I'll put a little bit extra load on there and check it again. So now we're going from the second. So now that 3 thou feeler gauge stops at the 8th fret. Alright, let's give it a little bit more load. Okay, so 3 thou. Good, still clears that second fret. Now it goes up to the 6th fret. Let's put a little bit more load again. Okay, that's good. 2nd fret clears. The 3rd fret doesn't. 
and this is basically tight all the way along. So we've got we've got three thou relief at the second fret. This is the best possible case scenario. This guitar is going to play like a dream when it's done. Obviously there's lots of recrowning to be done. You can see those frets are really squared off. But we got the lay of that neck is beautiful and there's still tons of real estate left on the crowns of those frets. So now we start the recrowning process. Here's the first five frets. Make sure that we go equi strokes on each side of that crown to chase the crown back to the center of the fret. I'm going to bring you in for a little bit closer look again. This is the first five frets. Now we're moving up the neck from the sixth fret to the eleventh. And again, split those file strokes up side to side. That's our seventh fret. So now we're up at the top end of the fingerboard and where most of the wear is. Now you can see I'm getting closer and closer to the body here. So when I get this close, I start the stroke of the file from the, the highest portion of the radius and then file down towards that body. We've got our protective cover on there. They took the biggest hit, those last two frets, as you saw earlier in the video. We had to take quite a bit off there to get these to level out. So I'll bring you around and show you this other half. So I've switched up my game now to get the other half, the treble side of these upper frets. Again, starting at the highest part of the crown and working towards that outside edge. You could spend $130,000 on a fret dressing machine or you can buy yourself a tech deck. Watch my videos. It's all here. And now we're on to the next stage. Get rid of those filings. Before I go to the first grit of abrasive, I wanted to bring you in close so that you can see all of the tooling marks of the file and also the light trace of ghost marks from the deepest grooves in those frets. Watch how quickly those tooling marks disappear. We've had a we've had a pretty dry winter, so oh boy, never really noticed that till now. That's uh, that needed some attention as well. Okay, liking that. Naturally, the other side needs the same treatment. Got my hand here to sort of protect the headstock. At this stage, you're really kind of listening to that file, kind of go from a crunch to a whisper. There you go. Yeah, we're there. We've arrived. With a circular motion across the edge of those crowns, don't dip onto the main portion of the fret, just the beveled edges that we're taking care of here. 
So I go with a kind of circular motion initially, this is 400 grit, clock back 400 grit. And then I'll go in the opposite circular motion, so I'm going kind of clockwise, counterclockwise, right, and get all of the worst of that off. And then we kind of bump along that bevel and smooth it out. Now we're going to catch the last bit of it with a die grinder in the uh, strop. Okay, this other side, same thing, circular motion, right up, kind of a little more difficult to get near that body, and then reverse. So I'm going kind of clockwise, counterclockwise, and then straight along those bevels. And now we're ready for the strop. And once again, we have the ultimate example of fret perfection. Yeah, those frets are buffed to a one micron finish. And with the height of those crowns, he's good for years to come. And now we're onto the compensated nut. Here's our first step. So I've cut this length off, a little bit oversized, that uh, profiled blank that you guys get. And our first thing is kind of determine the thickness that we need to be able to drop that into that slot. And as you can see, the Telecaster or Stratocaster is really kind of a different story than the Les Paul or a Martin Acoustic. A little bit more involved than most because in the American ones anyway, the actual slot itself, you can see when I put that straight edge in there, that the slot itself has the radius on it. So, so it's a little bit more involved in getting these ones right. So first thing we're going to do is just basically take that blank down and just make sure that leg, it should be a press fit and that's what we're going for. I've sanded that down for a press fit and now I'm tracing the radius onto the foot. Okay, we've got a pretty good radius fit there but we, we need to go deeper than that so let's get another tracing. Okay, I've made up a little uh, a radius template to make sure that curvature matches. It looks like, yeah, we've got a good match there. Uh, this leg that goes into the slot is still way too big. So now we're going to bring that down again and we're just tracing it like we did before against the, uh, against the radius of the fingerboard itself. Looking good, but we still got a ways to go. So you can see here that we've got, we still need to come down quite a bit. So I'm going to put the radius on the cap of that nut now. Okay, now we're honing in for the final fit. Yeah, I'm liking that. So now we can put our original nut across that ledge and trace our string spacing so we get a perfect match. So 
So I know you guys, you know, you got your 28 nut blanks, but you can see, and don't be shy, uh, you can see how you can go through those nut blanks in a hurry. I, I'm just kind of giving you the, you know, the skinny on, the, you know, what you can expect as you try this. It's, it's very exacting. Even myself, I take a double run at it, sometimes a triple run. There's a reason that, uh, you know, Jody drove a thousand miles round trip and why got a guy shipping a guitar from uh, Wyoming, a Gibson guitar that nobody could ever tune. It's a very exacting task. This type of fender nut is, as, as I mentioned earlier, it's much further complicated because the underside of the ledge has a curvature, the actual leg that goes into the slot has a curvature, and of course the crown has its curvature. So again, we're leaving kind of more real estate than we need so that we have something to play with and the nut it's protruding on either side as we get closer to the final product it allows us that extra luxury to kind of shift a little bit to get it dead center okay you've seen it enough times before that's our next step now these are 10 to 46 strings concert pitch so there's our initial values I'll just pull that out for a second so if we look on the underside this is where we're starting We'll hone it in a little tighter as we get on the final run with this. Okay, we'll get our cover off. Okay, we are back with this telly again. So you saw that before footage, before the compensated nut. You saw how much sharpness there was across the uh, first fret. So let's compare apples to apples. Same guitar, same strings, same tuning with a compensated nut. I rest my case. Okay, we're going to take this one step further. And if you got a telly at home, Les Paul, any guitar for that matter, try this. See how in tune your guitar is. Play the seventh fret note and the corresponding octave on the 19th fret. Every string all the way across. So now that this 60th anniversary telly has had the once over compensated nut fret dress, the whole setup, Glendale saddles, well, you know something? You can count on it. This guitar will stay perfectly in tune for the next 60 years. So it's one thing to check and micro check the uh, open string, first fret notes, seventh fret, 19th fret, octaves, all of that stuff. But the real acid test, of course, is just to play some chords. So, as you've heard me do so many times before, I like to sort of duplicate the same chord with different voicings along the entire span of the neck. That is the ultimate intonation check. All those first position chords that are never quite in tune. And my 1-6-10 